Good evening and welcome to the coffee bar in my home. I'm Joseph Brewer and we're discussing my book, A Practical Guide for Church Ushers and Greeters. Um, you can see the cover in the background there as well. Um, let's jump on in. So this one's a little bit of a tough one for me right here because it um, has to do with caring for aging ushers. Um, one of my ushers, um, once he got into his 70s, he, he, he started struggling. And he, um, I, I rotate my ushers around the auditorium and um, so that they have an opportunity to um, be around other church members and different church members and not just stuck in the same spot all the time. Um, I want them to be able to be a blessing to as many people as possible through uh, the ushering ministry. So I rotate them every week to a new position. And at a certain point, he, he didn't struggle with that at all for um, 10 years and maybe longer. And then uh, what happened was after the ushers meetings, he a couple, two or three times, he came up to me and asked me how to fulfill his duties in that one uh, spot that I put him in that week. So uh, I praise God that I realized rather quickly that he was struggling. And so I started praying about it and I came up with a plan that um, to extend his time as an usher, to extend his time in that ministry. So I had to consider all the different locations that I had, the um, how much work they were, um, the opportunities there were. And so I found a particular spot that I could put him where he could be like everybody's grandfather as they came in. Um, it gave him um, opportunities to greet a lot of people. And it also, uh, it was right next to my pastor's library. So I was able to put him where um, anytime that my pastor was coming or going out of his library, the two of them would have just a couple more moments together um, when, uh, while he was ushering. And so look for the signs of an aging usher and um, take care of them. Um, they, uh, I mean, it, 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 it's hard for us. Um, it's hard for me to see um, a fellow church member declining because of age. It, it's just, it's hard to watch. And <clears throat> so let's not embarrass them. Um, let's extend their ministry. Um, I, I, you know, after a couple times of asking, I realized that it was, he was a little bit embarrassed because he wasn't remembering how uh, to perform his duties in a specific location. And I just, I don't want to embarrass him. I, I didn't even want to have to make him humble himself to come ask me. So um, I came up with the plan and I, I put him over there. Um, it may be something that you want to discuss with your pastor. And I made the decision that I would not ask him to um, stop serving in that capacity, in that ministry. Um, I would wait until either my pastor came to me and said, he just he, he's struggling so much he can't do it anymore um or he himself came to me and said that he just couldn't do it anymore but i i was not going to take away that opportunity from that um from that man uh to serve god in that capacity so i believe it extended his um ability to usher for probably another five to seven years something like that and it 
became every you know the rest of my ushers all considered that spot his spot uh we still refer to it as, as his spot <clears throat> and um you know there did come a point where uh he just wasn't able to do it anymore and he gracefully um bowed out of that uh that ministry and so just look for that opportunity to help them to exit gracefully extend their service as long as possible um because again they're just trying to serve god like the rest of us so help them as best you can and watch out for them um and you know i i just i i'm really grateful to god for um giving me the wisdom and the, the the vision to see the need and the wisdom to be able to address it and to be able to um watch out for um that usher um that church member and um i i miss having him ushering now um i miss having him in my ushers meetings and he he had been ushering for so long that even after um, he wasn't ushering anymore, um, he still came to the meetings a couple of times um, because he, well, he forgot. And so I just assigned him to his normal position. And then when he went inside, um, I believe it was his wife um, who um, went ahead and grabbed him and, and helped him um trend you know to go just have grab a seat and to <clears throat> um listen to the preaching so anyway it's uh <clears throat> that one's kind of emotional for me because you know it's somebody that i greatly admire and admired and you know years of serving around him and just i i i had to let him go at at a certain point so anyway um just try to help them ex exit gracefully as they reach an age where they can no longer usher and working with volunteers is a challenge to say the least um you can't necessarily fire them and <clears throat> although you may want to at times um but they are volunteers now um some may have um, volunteered to do the job, to be an usher, to be a greeter. Others may have been coerced or just told, hey, you're going to do it. Um, so it's finding the right motivation for them, um, for all the various ushers is, uh, that one can be, that one can be a struggle. Um, so you know you you'll have one usher who he uh he's got lots of ideas lots of plans um he's thinking he's on his feet he's you know he's on the go he he wants to do a great job and he you know he wants to just do things the way that uh seem right to him and that may or may not be good depending on um the things that he wants to do but I, I I love feedback uh, from the ushers. I love um, hearing, hey, can we try this? Should we do this? Should we do that? Um, what about this? What about that? I always want feedback. I always want to hear from them because if you don't know that there's a problem, you can't fix it. Um, you can't improve things unless you know that there's a problem. So I like hearing those things. And so it's but you may have to dial them back now i personally i would rather have somebody who's gung-ho that needs to be dialed back a little bit than somebody you have to prod to get going um so uh the ones that have to be prodded to get going you may want to help them find another ministry to be involved in um if you can um if you can't then you're going to have to figure out how um and what motivates them um all of us are equipped with different gifts uh different perspectives different talents uh different physical abilities 
So you're going to have to assess each of your ushers, figure out their strong strong points, their their weak points, and how to help them. Um, I had one usher who wanted me to actually I had a couple of ushers who wanted me to um, direct them every every step of the way. They wanted exactly what words to say, uh, when to say them, who to say them to, and things like that. Well, okay. Um, you know, that's not my personality, but, um, you know, I just, I, I praise God for their willingness to usher and to serve in that ministry. So I um, did my best to help them, to coach them, to um, watch over them and take care of them. So uh, put them in, I would spread them out so that they were with a couple of the stronger uh, ushers to make sure that um, things were covered. Now, over time, they, they had it all down over time, but anytime I made a change um, or I made a suggestion, um, as soon as I did that, they they wanted me to, okay, what do you want me to say? How, how do you want me to say it? What words should I use? Um, you know, and so uh, you're going to have both types. You're, you're going to have type and you're going to have the guys that are just, you know, just going to do what you ask them to do and do you a good job. So, um, but praise God that you have all of them because um, something I learned, and I'm not saying that these ushers were lazy because I don't believe that at all. Um, but I learned uh, running work that uh, I had an owner's son that worked for me. And, oh, the guy was just so lazy because his dad owned the company. He'd show up late um, on a Saturday. He'd have his bib, one side of his bib overalls hanging down, boot laces dragging behind him, eating a breakfast burrito with one hand and holding a second breakfast burrito in the other hand. And he was so lazy that um, I, yeah, I, I really didn't, uh, I didn't like having him on my job until I was overthinking things. And I was on a job and for me, I, you know, I had, I knew all the steps that we had to go through. I knew what the future uh, expansion plans were in this uh, um, manufacturing facility that we were working in. And so I've got all these things going on in my head. All he could see was the shortest path to getting done so he could do less work. Well, okay. Um, I realized in that moment that even a lazy man can have value. So even when you have um, somebody that needs a lot of guidance, um, that's okay. They're, you know, they're going to show you things. You're going to learn things from them. If you pay attention, listen to them, learn from them, um, watch them, see what they do. It, all it's going to do is make you better as head usher, and it's going to um, help you to make your ministry, um, the ministry of your ushers, that much more um, professional. So learn from all of them, listen to all of them, uh, watch what they do, and it doesn't mean that you can always do what they suggest, but... Uh, listen to them. Um, you want them to come to you with ideas. You want them to come to you with suggestions. And um, so don't, don't get too frustrated with the ones that you have to hold their hand and, uh, you know, lead them all the, all the way down basically to, you know, picking up the offering. Um, and remember, they're not you. Um, they're a, that was something else I learned running work because uh, um, yeah, I was pretty aggressive and I expected whoever was working with me um, to at least work as hard as I did, even if they didn't have the same 
uh, knowledge, same intellect, same tools. I, I expected them to at least keep up with me. And I found out that's not always, um, that's not always going to be how it is. Every, they're going to have you know, guys with different physical issues. I mean, you may have a guy that has a, that walks with a limp or, you know, that, um, you know, has one leg longer than the other. Um, someone who has um, foot problems, knee problems, and different physical problems that, so just be grateful that they're serving um, and watch out for them, help them, um, adjust where they're at if you need to, move them around, um, put them in a place where um, they're the most effective and where they can, um, where they can shine, um, and where they can make your ministry look professional. Um, so that's just one more little thing with the volunteers. And, you know, it, like I said, it's tough because, uh, you don't know which ones were coerced. You don't know which one said, Hey, uh, that looks like the job for me that, you know, I'd love to be an usher. Um, so, you know, the ones that are coerced take a little more work than the ones who just wanted to do it. Um, and one of the other things that I found with my ushers, just talking to them over the years, is um, most of them have a personal security plan. So um, we have our basic security protocols in my church, but um individually the ushers have plans um one of the ushers he just he plans to pick up a chair um if a threat ever arises um and use the chair as a weapon um use the chair as a distraction um others have uh you know plan to <laughs> throw a hymnal or whatever um just cause distractions cause um you know to stop some type of a security threat so let them have a personal security plan um hopefully they'll go over it with you they'll talk to you about it and then you can assist them with it and you know make additional suggestions to them and um you know but you want them to have that level of comfort of having a, a personal security plan you know um carrying pepper spray all my ushers carry pepper spray um and uh but you want them to have that comfort of their own plan also as much as you can without disrupting things um so just one of those other things to keep in mind now you want your ushers and your greeters to bring guests to church so um that's a little bit of a challenge because, um, you know, especially if you're, you know, if you have just enough ushers to cover everything, but <clears throat> encourage them to bring their guests and support them in doing that. Um, so what I would do is if one of my uh, ushers or greeters has a guest, I will excuse them for the day uh, to tend to their guests, to tend to their friend or whoever it is, if I can spare them that day. If I cannot spare them that day, then I have them set their guest um, in their area of operation so that they can still um, tend to their guest as much as possible while they're still discharging their duties as an usher or greeter. Um, mostly my greeters are outside. Um, I will let the person um, hang out with my greeters out front, um, you know, the, the guest, um, so that they're comfortable, because that's one of the things that uh, we want to make sure is that the guest is comfortable um, and that the ushers and greeters feel good about bringing somebody. They're not worried about getting in trouble. They're not worried about... Um, not taking adequate care of the person. So um, have a plan for that. And um, if you can, um, <clears throat> let them 
sit the person in the wherever they're going to be sitting. And that way they can also introduce them to people. Uh, they can introduce them to their other friends. They can introduce them to the other ushers, the other greeters and all those things. And, um, you know, maybe they'll make some other connections as well. So you know, just something else to keep in mind as a head usher uh, while you're uh, tending to your um, ushers and greeters and them having guests. So with that, we will uh, wrap up this session tonight. And, um, you know, I hope these are a blessing to you. Um, it's uh, been a blessing to me going through them, um, even though I wrote the book. It's still, uh, I like, I like going back through it and refreshing my own memory. And also, as I'm doing these, things come to my mind that, it, you know, I will update the book again um, in another couple of years. And so this will give me more, this also gives me more thought and more things to uh, include in the next revision. So anyway, with that, let's pray and uh, we'll call it uh, good for the evening. Father, thank you for your goodness and grace, your mercy. Um, just pray that you would bless us as we uh, uh, go about these ministries of ushering and greeting and um, as head usher and, um, you know, those in charge of security and things. And just pray that you just bless them, bless us, watch over us, use us, particularly use us in the lives of all the folks that we come into contact with, that we might be a blessing to them, protect our churches, help them to grow, help us to see folks come to Christ, for we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a good night.